Over the years, The Simpsons have made a name for themselves for insulting a variety of countries and cultures with intentionally one-dimensional stereotypes. First, there were one-off characters. Then, for the 16th episode of the 6th season, the show took on an entire country with the episode Bart vs. Australia. In the installment, The Simpsons traveled down under, so Bart can apologize over a prank call that soon became an international incident. You're just some punk kid, aren't you? The episode first aired in the US in February 1995, then soon after in Australia. And after the country at the center of the installment saw how they and their culture were represented, there was an immediate backlash. Despite all the stereotypes that had appeared in The Simpsons, they were never intended to be malicious, as the show lightheartedly poked fun at the very idea of stereotypes and the ignorance of people who take them seriously. Still, even with the obvious and perfectly executed sarcasm and satire that you'd expect from a golden era episode of The Simpsons, an embarrassingly large number of Australians took the bait and were deeply offended by The Simpsons' clearly intentionally inaccurate parody of their country. That's a bloody outrage it is! The Bart vs. Australia episode opens as Bart realizes that the water in the sink always drains counterclockwise. Lisa explains that it only drains the other way in the Southern Hemisphere due to the Coriolis effect. In the Northern Hemisphere, water always drains counterclockwise. It's called the Coriolis effect. In response, Bart calls various countries in the Southern Hemisphere to confirm this. When Lisa points out how expensive overseas calls are, Bart makes a collect call to Australia. A boy named Tobias answers the phone and, ultimately, the call lasts hours. Weeks later, Tobias's father Bruno was billed $900 for the call. Bruno calls Bart and demands payment, but Bart just taunts him. <laughs> I don't think so. You're all the way in Australia. Soon, Australia indicts Bart for fraud. A U.S. State Department official arrives and explains that Bart has worsened an already acrimonious relationship with Australia. The State Department wants to imprison Bart for five years to placate the country. However, they eventually find a compromise where Bart just has to apologize to Australia. After arriving in the country, Bart sees a sign prohibiting visitors from bringing in foreign species, so he leaves his pet bullfrog at the airport, which is soon inadvertently introduced into the ecosystem. Bart makes his public apology, but Australian officials demand that he also receive a kick, as is the tradition in Australia. In response, the Simpsons flee, as they are chased by a large angry mob before finally finding sanctuary in the US Embassy. Eventually, another compromise is made between the countries, one kick from the Australian Prime Minister. Bart agrees to the punishment. However, he ends up dodging the kick before mooning the Australians. The outraged mob storms the American Embassy, forcing the Simpsons and the building staff to evacuate by helicopter. From the air, the Simpsons notice that Bart's bullfrog is reproduced and its offspring are wreaking havoc on the Australian ecosystem and farms. The family laugh victoriously, unaware that a koala has stowed away aboard the helicopter, suggesting that it too may be introduced to America and detrimentally impact the country's own ecosystem and farms. The episode was written by Bill Oakley and Josh Weinstein. At that point, the two had penned a number of classic episodes, including Lisa vs. Malibu Stacy, the 14th episode of the 5th season, when Lisa creates a doll as a positive role model for young girls. And the 7th episode of the 4th season, Marge gets a job, in which Marge starts working at the Springfield Power Plant. Bart vs. Australia was directed by Wes Archer, one of the most prolific directors for this series, especially during the show's golden era between the early to late 90s. At the time, he'd already directed a number of classic episodes, including the fourth episode of the sixth season, Itchy and Scratchy Land, when the family's vacation is ruined after the titular theme park malfunctions, and Homer Loves Flanders, the 16th episode of the fifth season in which the neighbors become unlikely friends. Not Joe, not Joe, man! Bart vs. Australia came about because, until that point, The Simpsons had been all about making fun of America, its people, and their culture. Now they thought it would be interesting to poke fun at a whole other nation. The strange scene in the episode were intentionally designed to be highly inaccurate, with many things about the country and the culture being completely made up for no other reason than pure fun. Ultimately, the closest the episode got to accurate was the country's landscape and iconic buildings, as the animation team had used tourist guides for reference. Strangely, although the Coriolis effect serves as a key plot point, the show was completely wrong about it, and inadvertently perpetuated the popular myth that it affects the motion of the drains in the northern and southern hemispheres, marking one of the first times, if not the very first instance, where the know-it-all Lisa was actually wrong. How could this have happened? I feel so dirty. <laughs> Typical of a Golden Era episode, Bart vs. Australia is laid with numerous references and jokes. 
The very plot of the installment is based on the real-life case of Michael Fay, an American teenager who created an international incident after he stole road signs and allegedly vandalized 18 cars over a 10-day period in Singapore in September 1993. After confessing to the crimes, Fay received the highly unusual punishment for an American of four cane strokes in May 1994. Like in the Simpsons episode, Fay later claimed that his own country officials misled him. Although he acknowledged that he did indeed steal the signs, Fay insisted that he was innocent of the vandalism and explained that he only pled guilty to both accusations under the impression that pleading guilty wouldn't include caning as a potential punishment. When Bart calls various locations in the Southern Hemisphere, he calls an elderly man in Buenos Aires, who strongly resembles Adolf Hitler, which is a reference to the popular myth that Hitler faked his death and fled to Argentina after the end of the Second World War. Eine Minute, eine Minute. Ah. When Bart is talking to Bruno on the phone, he references the Australian native animal, the dingo. Hey, I think I hear a dingo eating your baby. The line is a reference to the 1988 film A Cry in the Dark, about the real-life case of Azaria Chamberlain, a 10-week-old baby who was snatched and presumably killed by dingoes in 1980. There wasn't time to go and tell people, I just yelled out, has anyone got a torch? The dingoes got my baby. The scene where the Simpsons family and the embassy staff get evacuated by a helicopter is a reference to the real-life evacuation of the U.S. Embassy in Saigon at the end of the Vietnam War in April 1975. The plot point of having the bullfrog take over Australia and destroy all the crops is a reference to Australia's real-life serious ecological problem with the cane toad, which were originally introduced to the country to protect sugarcane from the cane beetle, but soon became an uncontrollable pest themselves, as documented in the classic 1988 documentary Cane Toad and Unnatural History and its 2010 sequel, Cane Toad The Conquest, which details how futile Australia's efforts have been to address the self-inflicted environmental problem. The toad will even try and eat ping-pong balls as they bounce past the front of them. So the general selection of food for a cane toad is if it moves or even if it doesn't move, if it can be fitted into its mouth, then it will attempt to eat it. In one scene, Marge orders a coffee at a bar, which confuses the bartender. Now just have a cup of coffee. Beer it is. No, I said coffee. Beer? The scene is a reference to the stereotype of Australians as being so obsessed with beer that they can't comprehend someone drinking anything else. In one scene, Bart is confronted by a man while playing with a pocket knife. Call that a knife? This is a knife. The sequence is a reference to the famous scene from the 1986 hit Australian film Crocodile Dundee, in which the titular character Mick Dundee is threatened with a switchblade. And your wallet. That's not a knife. That's a knife. Bruno's line about the bidet is also a reference to another classic scene from Crocodile Dundee. Oh my god! There's nothing wrong with the bidet, is there? Some nitwits put two dunnies in here. You figure it out. For washing your backside, right? Since airing, Bart vs. Australia has overwhelmingly received positive reviews from fans and critics alike, with some considering it to be one of the best Simpsons episodes of all time, if not the best. But, back when it was first released, although some Australians considered it an honor that Australia was chosen to be the first country that the Simpsons family visited, there was significant outrage from some locals. Ooh! Oh! Ow! Oh, that's it! The vast majority of citizens who were already fans of The Simpsons either loved the episode or just contextualized the jokes and references and appreciated that the show was indulging in stereotypes for the sake of parody and satire. However, understandably, some people were offended. Soon after it aired in the country, The Simpsons staff received over 100 letters from Australians who were insulted. The episode was even mentioned in Australian Parliament. I'm gonna report this to me member of Parliament! Hey, Gus! For the most part, those who were offended simply didn't get the joke that The Simpsons staff had intentionally misrepresented Australians and their culture. So, people were either offended by the fact that Australians were depicted as backwards, or because of all the inaccuracies. Australian journalist for the Newcastle Herald, James Joyce, was especially angry over the installment, and articulated the outrage that a portion of Australians had at the episode, claiming that the country were right to be upset. Although Joyce acknowledged that the episode was, quote, wonderfully amusing, he argued that, ultimately, its only saving grace was that it wasn't as offensive as an earlier installment of The Simpsons, the 11th episode of the series, The Crepes of Wrath, which first aired back in April 1990. In that episode, Bart is sent to France as part of a student exchange program during which his stereotypically French hosts treat him like a slave. Hiya, boy! My grapes are waiting for their water! Ugh. Ugh. The episode is widely considered to be one of the best of the series, despite it indulging in numerous negative stereotypes about the French. Allez, bon, c'est chancy! Oui, oui. Passe-moi le vin! 
All up, Joyce condemned the Australian episode as vicious, unkind, and an offensive slaughter of Australian culture. Cartoons don't have to be 100% realistic. <laughs> Although the vast majority of the criticism of Bart vs. Australia was ridiculous, there were some legitimate complaints and controversies. Strangely, although the episode took some major poetic license when it came to depicting Australia in order to highlight how little foreigners, especially Americans, knew about the country, the show's writers also accidentally got a lot of objective facts that were crucial to the plot flat out wrong. The most notable of these is, of course, the Coriolis Effect, which is actually best known in the scientific community as the Coriolis Force. Years after the episode first aired in November 2004, Australia's celebrity scientist Carl Krasinski wrote an article explaining the phenomenon and the inaccuracies in the episode, pointing out that the water can swirl in the opposite way in plug holes in Australia, but only in carefully controlled situations, or as a result of how the water entered the toilet bowl or basin. And even then, the shape of the receptacle can play more of a role in the direction of the swirl than the Coriolis force itself. The plot point of the bullfrogs is also inaccurate. The clerk at the souvenir store acts like he's never seen a frog before, despite Australia having hundreds of species of the animal, including bullfrogs. Furthermore, bullfrogs are carnivorous and wouldn't feed on corn. In one scene, Lisa plays the Aboriginal instrument, the didgeridoo. In Aboriginal culture, females are generally forbidden from playing the instrument, as it's believed that any female who plays it will become infertile. Koalas in the episode are drawn with only one thumb, when they actually have two on each paw. Though, having said that, the Simpsons universe consists of yellow Caucasians with four fingers. In another million years, man will have an extra finger. Five fingers? Ooh, freak show. Outside of the country, the beer company Foster's is inextricably linked with Australia. This is because of a series of highly successful international ad campaigns throughout the 80s and 90s. In reality, Foster's, especially at the time, has always predominantly been known as an export beer. Victorian Bitter, better known as VB, is the country's most well-known beer, thanks to their own highly successful iconic commercials throughout the 70s, 80s, and 90s. A hard-earned purse needs a big cold beer, and the best cold beer is Vic, Vic Bitter. Beyond the story itself, a number of other things about the Bart vs. Australia episode didn't sit well with some Australians. However, the depictions that they found so offensive because they considered them so inaccurate weren't as far from the truth as they wanted to believe. The episode depicts Australians being so obsessed with beer that they can't comprehend someone drinking anything else. Understandably, some Australians took offense to being depicted as drunks. Help me please, I'm sick. <laughs> but many Australians are in fact proud of their alcohol consumption. In fact, the idea of the country's Prime Minister openly celebrating his love of beer is indeed accurate, at least in regards to the country's former leader, Bob Hawke, who was famous for his love of beer, both during his time as Prime Minister and after. Probably the greatest Prime Minister of Australia. He relates to the people, the public love him. What does one of our greatest Prime Ministers do? He sculled it. Listen, they're going, skull, skull, skull. And the great man, Bobby Hawke, nailed it. Ironically, decades since the episode first aired, Australia, or at least parts of it, is now known just as much, if not more so, for its love of coffee than beer. In fact, ironically, the first ever McDonald's McCafe in the world was founded in the Australian capital city of Melbourne in 1993, two years before Bart vs. Australia first aired. Despite being criticized for mocking the country and its history, the episode did receive positive reviews from some Australians, too. Presumably, not only did they get the joke that almost anything and everything was intentionally misrepresented, but they were probably also very thankful that it wasn't a faithful depiction of the country, because, had it been accurate, they would have had plenty of things to be embarrassed by. Such as the country's little mentioned civil war, when the country's military took on the indigenous emu population. The large, flightless bird had been decimating farmland, causing so much damage that soldiers, armed with some of the very same weapons they'd used in World War I, were sent into the Campion district of Western Australia to assist the hapless farmers to cull the bird's numbers. The battle lasted over a month, between November and December 1932, and, although a few birds made the ultimate sacrifice, ultimately it was the emus who emerged victorious. Ironically, had the Simpsons writing staff actually done their research on Australia and its country's often strange history, rather than making the creative decision to intentionally misrepresent everything, they may have realized the comedy goldmine that they had at their disposal. So, for all those Australians who were legitimately offended by the episode, they should actually be thankful that the installment wasn't more accurate, as it very well may have ended up being less offensive as it was embarrassing. He moved. <laughs> The 
The Simpsons are known for making fun of the average American in most episodes of the show, and despite the change in location, the Bart vs. Australia installment is no different. Ultimately, if anything, the episode is much harsher on Americans than Australians. While Australia and its culture were intentionally misrepresented, the depiction of the average American via the Simpsons family is far from flattering. Despite the idea of the booting being a major plot point in the episode, corporal punishment had in fact been outlawed in Australia since the 80s. Conversely, it was, and as of September 2023, still is perfectly legal in a number of states throughout the US. Looking out the window, that's a paddling. At its core, the scene in which Bart is supposed to receive the boot is a criticism of Singapore and their treatment of Faye while criticizing the very idea of physical assault as a legal punishment. But having Homer lecture and condemn Australia over the draconian and archaic legal system is more of a criticism of America's own ideas of crime and punishment, while highlighting how little the average American even knows about their own legal system. They cannot arrest a husband and wife for the same crime. There's also, of course, Homer's profound hypocrisy, given that he has routinely strangled Bart over the most minor of reasons. Domer! <laughs> Why, you little? <laughs> then there's Australia's obsession with the boot that's so culturally ingrained that it appears on their flag and disrespecting it is a crime. Disparaging the boot is a bootable offense. It's one of their proudest traditions. The joke is an obvious shot at Americans who are obsessed about always respecting the US flag and punishing anyone who disrespects it with extreme consequences. Gardner doesn't have time to get out of the truck to pick up all the garbage cans, but he will if he spots that familiar piece of red, white, and blue fabric. Ooh, you better believe that's a bad one. In a scene where Homer and Bart flee the mob, they attempt to get away by climbing into the pouches of some nearby kangaroos, only to discover that they can't. Ew! It's not like in cartoons. Yeah. The fact that the two think that a human being could write in a kangaroo's pouch and that it's something that Australians do because they had previously seen it depicted in cartoons and comic strips is a clear satirical jab at the ignorance and gullibility of some tourists. There's drop bears. Drop bears? Uh, yeah. Like a, like a yeah. bigger, yeah. meaner uh, koala bear. Additionally, the fence of the American Embassy has the sign that reads made with pride in the USA. Yet, it first malfunctions when the Embassy is trying to close it to keep the Simpsons out. Later, the fence is easily destroyed when Bart enrages the mob. Ultimately, for an episode that was supposedly all about ridiculing anything and everything remotely Australian, there's sure a lot of Easter eggs laid throughout the Bart vs. Australian installment that indicate a legitimate understanding and appreciation for the country and its people. At one point in the episode, the Simpsons are shown a slideshow by the U.S. Department of State depicting a boarded-up cinema with a marquee reading Yahoo! Serious Festival. I know those words, but that sign makes no sense. The image is a reference to the Australian personality Greg Peed, better known by his stage name, which is literally Yahoo! Serious. At the time, he was best known by Americans for writing, directing, and starring in the 1988 film Young Einstein. Also during the slideshow, there's an image of a man holding a giant battery. This is a reference to Australian personality Mark Jacko Jackson, who was first known in the country for his career as a frequently volatile football player before gaining fame as an actor. His most iconic roles were his gigs as a spokesperson, specifically for the battery company Energizer with his strange but memorable catchphrase. Energizer! Oi! The campaign was popular in both Australia and internationally, but the novelty eventually wore off and, ultimately, Jackson was replaced with something even more iconic, the Energizer Bunny in the late 80s. A word to the wise. Energize. The foot-long Vegemite sub from Subway, which is also seen in the slideshow, is a reference to one of the most popular, if not the most popular, and uniquely Australian spreads in the country. Also during the slideshow, there's a reference to the business Koala Blue. The chain was co-created by Australian celebrity Olivia Newton-John in 1983. Koala Blue soon became best known for its clothing line made up of mini skirts, t-shirts, and sweatpants. Ultimately, the business closed in 1992, though the company name was later repurposed for a line of Australian wines. Shortly before the Simpsons plane lands in Australia, the rubble from Skylab can be seen under the airport. This is a reference to America's first space station that was launched in May 1973. Space Lab eventually re-ended Earth's atmosphere and disintegrated in July 1979, scattering debris across the Indian Ocean and Western Australia. In the scene where Lisa discovers that Bart is in trouble with Australian authorities, the address for the collection agency can be seen, which is 10 Sheep Dip Court. 
The name is a reference to the legendary comedy team Monty Python and their sketch Bruce's, which parody stereotypes of Australians that were popular in the 70s and 80s. Good night, Bruce! Oh, hello, Bruce! How are you, Bruce? Ben Croft, Bruce. Uh, Where's Bruce? It's not here, Bruce. Bruce here teaches Aristotelian philosophy, and Bruce here is in charge of the sheep dip. <laughs> During the sequence, when Homer and Bart are chased by the mob into the U.S. Embassy, the iconic villain Wes from the 1981 Australian movie Mad Max 2 The Road Warrior can briefly be seen. As the Simpsons family fly off in a helicopter, the Australians pelt them with beer cans. In addition to underscoring Australians' love of beer and the ubiquitousness of it, the scene is also a reference to the final battle in the 1993 Yahoo! series film Reckless Kelly, a satirical take with the modern-day Ned Kelly, the famous Australian bushranger from the 1880s. No! In the scene when Marge and Lisa explain what a bullfrog is to an Australian local, he is shocked that Americans would choose such a strange name for the animal, then mentions what he would have called them. I'd have called them Chazwazers! The scene is a reference to the fact that Australia is notorious for having a very distinct vernacular that pretty much only makes sense to its citizens. An example of this appears earlier in the episode when Bart is talking with Bruno. Who do they think I am? Some stupid Aussie drongo? Drongo is indeed a word, at least in Australia, and it's the equivalent of calling someone an idiot. I'm gonna jam my thumb in it, but old man, this should really piss it off. The Simpsons staff had expected backlash to Bart vs. Australia, though they were surprised by the intensity of the outrage from people like Joyce. David Merkin, who was the Simpsons showrunner at the time that the episode was produced, responded to the criticism, expressing surprise that some people had completely missed the basic joke of intentionally getting everything wrong. Furthermore, Merkin pointed out that the country was chosen as the first for the entire family to visit because Australia and America were so similar in many ways, but that there were also numerous strange little differences that the show recognized as comedy gold that they just couldn't ignore. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? In May 1998, Fox Studios Australia was officially opened in the capital city of Sydney. The facility was established to primarily produce film and television projects. However, in November 1999, a backlot theme park in the vein of Universal Studios Hollywood was opened. The park featured a Simpsons attraction, for which they used an alternate version of Bart vs. Australia as part of the feature entitled Simpsons Down Under. The park had contacted the Simpsons writing staff and gotten them to write the screenplay for the ride based on the episode. The end result included portions of the original episode re-edited, while additional scenes were added. The new footage received mixed reviews, but not because Australians were offended. Rather, despite being written by Simpsons staff, the quality was mediocre at best. Wallaby high curtains! How fun! Not for the wallabies, Mom. <laughs> Later, in October 2001, the theme park portion of the studio was closed, as the overall attraction proved to be unprofitable. In the years since it first aired, it's become clearer and clearer that The Simpsons achieved the goal of producing a clever, layered installment of the show, so much so that in October 2015, Thomas Probst, an Australian, started a Change.org petition to rename the country's currency to dollar dues in reference to a scene from Bart vs. Australia. $900 At the time, the Australian economy was struggling, so the ostensible logic behind the petition was to stimulate the Australian economy, as the name change would make millions of people around the world want to get their hands on some Australian currency, driving up the value of the Australian dollar. The petition gained more than 50,000 signatures in just five days, and closed with almost 70,000 all up. A year later, in October 2016, during a visit to Australia, Simpsons creator Matt Groening revealed that he'd been uncomfortable with how the country had been portrayed in the episode. After the writing room made the decision to have the Simpsons travel to Australia, Groening had researched the country's culture and history to make sure they'd get it right, but Merkin soon made the creative decision for the show to go out of its way to get everything wrong. Reportedly, Merkin's decision came about because of how little anyone in the writing staff initially knew about the country. So, afraid they'd get too many things wrong, they just decided that they should actively get everything wrong, which, as they often found, was the perfect way to approach the production of a Simpsons episode. At first, Graining was wary but trusted Merkin's call. In the end, while most critics, including Australian ones, praised the installment, Graining still expressed embarrassment at some of the depictions of Australia in the episode. I'm so f embarrassed. From the very start of the series, The Simpsons have made fun of stereotypes, perceptions, and cultural prejudices. Few other television series have ever been able to match the show's ability, at least during the golden era, to mine pop culture and biases to produce timeless satire. Pretty much every episode of The Simpsons has something in it that will offend somebody somewhere at some point in time. Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? 
When Bart vs. Australia was produced, which was long before the internet was commonplace in mainstream society, many people had serious misconceptions about Australia which they had informed based on things they had seen in various pop culture mediums that were usually, whether intentionally or not, highly inaccurate. So, it's understandable that when some Australians saw the Bart vs. Australia episode, they were reminded of all the numerous incorrect depictions that had been produced prior to the installment. But, once you factor out people who already hated The Simpsons, and those who just chose to be offended without actually watching the episode, detractors were well and truly in the minority. Ultimately, most Australians understood that the installment was a satire of how little people knew about their country, specifically targeting the average American and their ignorance of other countries and cultures outside of their own. Like in the episode, people who traveled to Australia often had preconceived ideas about what they would encounter in the country that were based on one-dimensional stereotypes from films, TV series, and commercials only to discover that the people and the culture were completely different to their expectations. That was the point of the episode, and, with the exception of a vocal minority, the vast majority of people who actually watched Bart vs. Australia appreciated it for what it was, a clever, late installment of the show that served as both a parody and a tribute to the country that they were ostensibly mocking. Aye, mate! What's the good word? Chaz was us.